Despite launching several videos over the last six months, I still get comments with viewers claiming they cannot buy an EV because they cannot charge at home. So Dave takes it on, looks into why they believe this, and offers an absolute idiot or dummy's guide to charging your EV, whether or not you can charge at home. So what is the truth? Let's get two so-called important facts out the way first. Number one, there are public chargers specifically designed for people with EVs that cannot charge at home. And they range from an incredibly fast to an embarrassingly slow charger. Number two, you don't need to charge every night. Between once a week and once every 10 days is the normal for almost all EV drivers. Hey, isn't that the same frequency as my wife filling her petrol car up? Yes, it is. So before we drill down into those specific points, let's establish some core facts. The average UK motorist drives around 8,000 miles a year. But anything under 10,000 miles is still considered normal. These figures come from a variety of sources, including the AA, the RAC, the government and leasing companies, not me. I know some of you drive more, like me. I managed to cover about 18,000 miles last year. Many cover 5,000 miles or less, but the vast majority drive about 8,000 miles. Well, now let's look at the range of EVs. How far can they go? And it's true that many early cars could only cover about 70 or 80 miles on a full charge and took well over an hour, sometimes two, to recharge. But those days are long gone. Apart from the ultra-budget models, there's an incredibly small number of cars that cannot cover 150 miles on a full charge. The vast majority cover well over 200 miles in the real world, while the top models now exceed 400 mile range. Well, this is simply ignored by the anti-EV brigade who still remember 70 mile range. <laughs> they would. And recharging times have also tumbled, with the top cars now able to add 200 miles in less than 15 minutes. Well, that sort of time equates to getting into your petrol car at home, driving to the petrol station, filling up, paying, then driving home. I know that because my wife still does it. So an average new EV owner will cover more than 200 miles on a single charge. So our core data says that the average EV driver needs to top up about 150 to 200 miles of range every week, and that could take less than 15 minutes. And this core data is not understood by the majority of people thinking of switching their ice car for an EV. Just a little research of their own would establish these facts for themselves. Take a look at Top Gear or Car Wow or What Car. Yeah, their videos and programmes are totally over the top. And yeah, they do exaggerate, but they actually do convoys of EVs. Each one started with 100% charge and they film them until they run totally empty and grind to a halt. They then do a nice table and report the actual miles covered. Get your facts sorted before ordering your new EV. Know what it can do. Now it does get a bit more complicated and this is probably where we lose most non-EV owners. They used to going to the garage and filling up. That just took a few minutes actual filling and the price they would pay was clearly advertised before they stopped. It's dearer on the motorway services, cheaper at the supermarket. When faced with a multiple choice of chargers at a variety of prices equipped with different plugs, different power outputs, they get confused and many just give up. And Dave Takes It On now simplifies all this for you. Please watch this next bit of the video. It's only a few minutes long, but tells you all you need to know if you're considering buying a new electric vehicle in the UK, but are worried about charging Either you can or cannot charge at home. This guide covers absolutely every new EV on sale today, cheap, budget or expensive, American, European, Chinese, including Teslas, except one car, the Nissan Leaf, which is still on sale, but it is very different, but it is rapidly being phased out. As this is an idiot or dummy's guide, I would suggest not confusing things by looking at a Nissan Leaf unless you are well clued up and want to have problems charging now and more so in the future. Just go for simplicity. Choose any other car, any other new EV in the whole world. Here goes then. My idiot's guide to charging and my dummy's guide to charging, whichever you prefer. Your EV has a flap which covers a double charging socket. 
round bit at the top, twin holes at the bottom. Every single new car on sale today can accept two types of plugs. A Type 2, which uses the round bit at the top of your socket, and uses AC, alternating current electricity, like in your house. And a CCS2, which uses the top and bottom, the whole socket, and uses DC, direct current, electricity, like in a battery. Every single charge you go to anywhere in the UK or Europe will have at least one of these plugs. Often it will have both. So in simple terms, pull up at any charger in any new EV anywhere in the UK or Europe and you can always charge your car full stop, no problem. So why the different plugs? Well, unlike your previous petrol or diesel car, your EV does something your old car could never do. It can fill up your new EV battery by plugging one end of the cable that your car is supplied with into the Type 2 socket on your car and the other end into a standard 13 amp socket at home. OK, some people will not be able to park their EV close enough to the house or flat to be able to do this, but many can. You know which you are, so let me cover those who can first. If you can park near a suitable plug, charging for you is really simple. Remembering that you drive an average of less than 20 miles a day, your new EV will add about four miles for every hour it's plugged in. Now, this might sound seriously, even ridiculously slow, and yes it is. But if you plug it in at night before you go to bed, it will be full again long before you wake up. In fact, it doesn't matter if it takes one minute or six hours, as long as your battery is full every morning when you wake up. So, fact one, every day you wake up, your battery will be full and good for more than a week's driving. That couldn't be simpler, but it gets even better. If you tell your utility company, your British Gas, EDF, Eons, Scottish Power, that you now own an EV, you don't have to do this, but they will offer you a cheap rate for overnight electricity. They all do. So it's not only simple, but now really cheap. Let me stress this fact. If you can charge at home, only use your car for local commuting and shopping and visiting friends and family nearby, then if you plug it into a suitable standard 13 amp socket every night, you will never need to charge anywhere else. I say suitable because if the plug is outside, exposed to the weather, it obviously needs to be weatherproof and have an appropriate size fuse or circuit breaker protecting it. Now, we come to those, what if you can't charge at home? You cannot park anywhere near your house. Now again, the answer is really simple. Sticking with the Type 2 chargers just for the moment, you need to find somewhere you can plug your EV into nearby. There are tens of thousands of Type 2 chargers. They are everywhere. In car parks, at train stations, in retail parks, supermarkets, in a pub or fast food car park, outside cinemas, hotels, holiday rental properties, and your place of work may well also have chargers in their car park. All of these are listed on maps or in apps like Zap Map and they're much faster. Well, your 13 amp socket at home will charge at around four miles range added per hour plugged in. These public ones will offer uh, up to 20, 25, even 35 miles added range per hour plugged in. That's almost 10 times faster. At home, cost of charging your EV will simply be added to your electricity bill, but if you charge at a public charger, you will need to pay, just as you pay for your petrol. Many public chargers take contactless payments, but all can be paid via a free-to-download app on your mobile phone. And if you don't use a mobile phone, they all offer RFID cards, a bit like shop loyalty cards. And again, these are free. I have about 20 different charging apps on my mobile for when I go out and test public chargers for making these videos. They're all free. They take up very little space. But if you do arrive at a charger and you do not have the correct app, you can download it there and then. It just takes a minute or so. The viewers may be asking about now which chargers to use, where they are and the price, but we're concentrating at the moment on where you can charge. This is an idiot or dummies guide, so we'll tackle the issues one by one. I cover the power, the best charge and the price you can expect to pay, plus home versus public charging and which home charger to pick in other videos. Look out for them subscribe and click the bell icon so you'll be notified when they're released. Easy so far? 
So why are the two socket on your car and why AC and DC charging? Well, let's take an example. If once every few months you go to visit your Aunt Ethel, who lives 200 miles away, you will arrive at her house with your battery very nearly empty. So if you stay just a few hours and then want to head home, you can't. Even if Aunt Ethel had a suitable socket, it would take well over a day to top it back up. And if you went to a public Type 2 charger, it would take you about 5, 6 or 7 hours to fill up enough to get you home. For this reason, you have a second plug available. And a second socket, a CCS2 socket. And this one is blisteringly fast. While your home socket adds 4 miles and a public one adds up to 35 miles, a CCS2 can add up to 1000 miles for each hour it's plugged in. I told you they were fast. So to top up your battery by, say, 200 miles could take you less than 20 minutes. Barely time to grab a cappuccino and a muffin. But to finish with Aunt Ethel, if you visit her every single week and arrive back home with an empty battery, Plugging into your 13 amp socket overnight might only give you about 40 mile range, waiting for you in the morning. That is just enough to get to work and back, a little bit over, around 25 miles. Then you might add another 40 mile the next night and so on and so on. By the end of the week it could be back nearly fully charged again, ready for Aunt Ethel. But what happens if you do 50 miles every day and your 13 amp plug only replaces about 40 miles each night? Well, you need a home charger. They're faster. Well, these are quick, easy to fit by an electrician for those who can charge at home. They'll give you typically around 20, 25 miles per hour plugged in. So for most people, they can add 200 miles each night if they needed to. So get back from Aunt Ethel's with an empty battery and your more powerful home charger will make sure it's full again by the time you wake up. So here we find two other differences between EVs and petrol cars. First, if you go to a hotel or restaurant or stay at a holiday property or go to your local pub, many offer free EV charging for their clients. These are called destination chargers. They're very different from public chargers in that only clients or customers can use them. But they're free! So on holiday, drive to your hotel or rental property and plug your car in whenever you're not using it. The second difference is that many work car parks have chargers available for their employees. Again, plug in when you get to work, drive home with a full battery every day. No need ever, ever to charge at home. Well, back to CCS2. Not all CCS2 DC chargers top up in 20 minutes, some take a lot longer, but even the slowest will be unlikely to take more than an hour. So these are used where you need to fill up your battery much quicker than you can at home or at Ethel's or at any type of Type 2 public charger. But stop, they're not always what you need. Let's say you fancy going to watch the latest three hour long blockbuster film at your local cinema and they have public chargers outside. Even if your battery is empty, a CCS2 charger will fill it up within an hour. Unfortunately, that means your car is now blocking the charger while you're watching a film and stopping anyone else using it. That's bad protocol, inconsiderate to other EV drivers who may need to charge desperately. But many public chargers impose a fine to prevent you doing this. Just like you get a fine if you overstay in a car park. And these fines can be around £1 a minute once charging is complete. How sad would it be if you charge your car but then block others from using it for two hours and get a £120 fine for overstaying? Here, if they're available, it would be much better to find a Type 2 to charger and accept that you'll get three hours charging at a much slower rate, maybe 25-35 miles per hour. So around 100 miles added. The same applies if you're out for a meal with family or friends and you're likely to be there for a few hours or out on a retail therapy trip or on a visit to a stately home or your hairdressers. Find a Type 2 charger so you don't have to interrupt what you're doing to go out and move your car after 30 or 40 minutes. Well here another confusion arises when using public chargers. People instinctively head for the fastest charger they can find. They believe that a more powerful charger 
fills the battery up quicker. Well, obviously, a Type 2 charger is always going to be slower than a CCS2 charger, but power matters only up to a point. All cars and their batteries regulate the charge they receive to protect the battery from damage. So in reality, most cars never charge at the fastest possible speed, and most charge far slower than you would expect. I've produced another video in this series on what you can do to make sure your battery charges at the fastest possible speed. There is plenty you can change. The link to that down below. Well, the key message here is to think sensibly. Do you ever need to charge your car to 100%? Well, ask yourself, did you always fill your petrol car right to the very brim every single time you filled it up? No, you didn't. The REC did a survey a while back and found that the average car had less than a third of a tank at any one time. Most of us just top up smaller amounts, £20 or £50, and only ever fill up to the top when preparing for a long journey. Well, if you charge at home while you sleep, there's no real problem being able to charge to 100%. But check first in your handbook. Batteries are weird devices that use chemical reactions to store and release electricity. Some battery types love, or in fact need to, always charge to 100%. Others strongly advise against ever reaching 100%, instead stopping at 75 or 90%. Read your handbook or contact the manufacturer and always follow official advice and guidance, even if you believe, or your best mate says, it's wrong. There are more public destination and workplace charges available than petrol pumps in the UK, and they're being installed in huge quantities, so finding a charger is usually not a problem. What is a problem is the people who can't charge at home, but think they need to charge their EV every single night and spend hours looking for a nearby available charger and then face a long walk back. If you learn nothing else from this video, remember the average UK motorist drives 8,000 miles a year or less, that's 150 miles a week, and the average EV does over 200 miles on a single charge. Just like you didn't or don't top up with petrol every single night on a petrol car, why on earth would you think you need to top up your EV every night? If you can't charge at home, then find a charger nearby, which you can visit just once a week or 10 days, and set aside time to use it. Better still, find a local restaurant or pub which offers free charging and use them while you eat. So you then need to buy less on your weekly top up. Well, thanks for watching and keep a lookout for the next in the series, which charges are the fastest and what you can do to speed it up even more. I'm Dave.